Good morning, everyone. So today we're at a DS. It's a Citroen DS3. <coughs> now, this is the one with the 1.2 uh, PureTech engine, 120 brake horsepower, but the engine code is HNP, Hotel November Papa. Now, the problem with this, this is a world of pain, let me tell you. So the guy done a timing belt job on it. It suffered from fragments going into the oil sump, as you know. Wet timing belt broke up, blah, blah, blah. So he changed the oil pump and the weight belt, and I think that was a bit sure, and the spark plugs. So he put it all back together. It started and ran for 20 minutes, and he stopped it and went to start it again, and thereof it would not restart. So what we have now is occasionally, maybe every, say, 10 cranks, it sometimes attempts to start and maybe runs for a couple of seconds and cuts itself off. What we did find, though, just through testing, was we cranked it over, we had a spark, and then after a couple of seconds, the spark disappeared, and never to return until you left it. Maybe after 10 minutes, then it, he went and cranked it again, the spark came back, then disappeared. We bidirectionally controlled the spark, and it was good. There's nothing wrong with the spark. But what we did find was the injectors kept on firing fuel in, and I can show you that. I've got a screenshot in the scan tool when it done it. Pretty high times, I would say. So there we go, 40 milliseconds. And then it drops back down when I stop cranking. So that always remains there. We were then flung a curved ball. We looked at the camshaft defasers in this, which are the new type. And one was shown, the inlet was shown to be at 44 degrees. And hit, during crank, it stayed at 44 degrees. But the exhaust was meant to be at minus 22 degrees. And during crank, we were getting that floating between going up to 5 degrees and then it's going to 66 degrees. And we thought, that's no right. I think we've got another crank coming up. So you compare these two. See, it's at minus 19, minus 20. Then we crank it over again and then it shifts back. There we go. We're cranking, we're cranking. Look, oh, it moved back to 4. And it was minus 20. And it's not allowing any oil to come into the passages because these uh, valves are closed. Go figure. That flung us for a loop. So we ended up replacing the oil control solenoid valve going into the exhaust defaser. And we changed the defaser of another uh, unit. Made no difference. We even tried programming these exhaust defasers back in. No difference. <sighs> the other thing we looked at was Oil pressure on crank, well, we're getting up to 5 bar, but you've got to take off 1 bar for atmospheric pressure, so we're getting up to 4 bar, really, which I thought was initially high, but I read last night that this engine can actually go to 10 bar. So there's another one. The injector pressure on this car is through the roof, by the way. Uh, when you're cranking it, it's 100 bar, which is double what anything I've seen, and it goes up to 400 bar. There's another thing new for us. There's a high-pressure pump there. Oh, the other thing I never said, there is no codes in this car. There's no codes in the engine ECU. You read fault codes, there's no codes there at all. In the engine ECU, you see about correlation, anything like that. We only have one code at service configuration with an F303. We don't know what that means. It's like for the telematics unit. But sometimes on the middle uh, unit in the car, you know the driver's display, we once got to say engine fault, contact your dealer or something like that. Our compression across the whole cylinders was a bit low, so the guy done the intake valves, and that raised it to about 80 PSI. We're up to about 80 PSI. Now, as far as I can see, the spec on this engine is 9 bar, so it's like we're down in compression. But I have seen it before. If you crank it a lot, petals going into the, the cylinders, it will lower the compression. So I'm just wondering if any used techs out there have came across this before. The usual rule of thumb with this engine, if there's fragments in it, you change the engine. That was what would happen at the main dealer here. But obviously, we've not got that luxury. And it did go. And when it goes, it sounds fine. Sure, you actually crank this over, sir, and just let them hear this. That's it. That'll do, my man. Now, there you go. It, it doesn't, doesn't sound too bad at all because we were worried about that moving, putting the timing out. But when it goes, but when the car actually runs for that two seconds, it sounds sweet. So 
we think there's a correlation problem, but why is the scan tool no picking it up? Well, the other thing, I cannot get access to this crankshaft sensor. I need to look at a wiring diagram and maybe get it at the ECU, so that's a pain. But I've got two camshafts uh, of scope time, 5 volts of 5 volt supply at the red, ground on the yellow, and it's a 12 volt square wave coming out of this one. So I'll let you see them, see if anybody's got a good known waveform for that. So here's just the two camshaft codes. As I told you, I couldn't get access to the crank because I didn't have the wiring diagram. But you can see they remain consistent with each other. Indeed, are they in the right place? I'm not sure. If anybody's got a good known waveform, it would be helpful. So you can see that the two, the two green traces, which was the inlet, remain inside of the big trace on the exhaust. So it's two, two, two. And that, you can see as we... We've cranked it for about 10 seconds here. You see that remains consistent throughout the whole trace. So these two, I was originally thinking the VVT was moving, but these two remain constant with each other. But whether it's like that with the crank, I do not know. The other thing I was going to say, when we looked at the defaser, it said uh, learning not complete. Whereas I've just looked at another wee car, which is a different engine code, this... And the defaser said learning completed. So does it need to complete the learning once it starts? Or can then we complete the learning on the scan tool? I don't know. But there's another bit of information. But apart from that, I'm absolutely clueless. But anyway, if anybody's out there, please chime in. Cheers. Oh, that's right. It went back to where it should be. That's right. Oh, that's the other thing. Oh, the scan tools we've used in this is the top down the Autel and the Snap-on. So Stu was just telling me that when we told it had a U-cam shaft defaser in the exhaust, it did, it stopped moving about and crank and it stayed at minus 22. That was on the Autel. Autel. But on the Snap-on, it's still showing it going to 66 degrees. So we're really giving, we're getting a run up an alleyway here that we're fighting the scan tools, fighting lots of things, but fundamentally, why is it turning off the spark? Uh, you would think that would be a timing issue. But then again, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, cheers.